Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be discussing respiratory distress or failure. In its simplest form, respiratory distress is a condition in which pulmonary activity is insufficient to bring oxygen to and to remove carbon dioxide from the blood. Challenges arise with the recognition of respiratory distress when the person appears to be breathing but is not actually breathing effectively. Proper rate and depth of breathing is important to assess when evaluating whether the person is effectively breathing. The two main actions involved in breathing are ventilation and oxygenation. Consider the signs and symptoms presented. So some questions to ask yourself for ventilation. Is the airway clean? Are the muscles of the chest functioning? And is the rate of breathing sufficient? For oxygenation, you should ask, is oxygen available? Is lung blood flow adequate? And can gases cross the pulmonary vasculature? So with recognizing respiratory distress, you're going to open without support, check for tachypnea, increased effort, clear sounds, tachycardia, agitated if they're pale or if their appearance or capillary beds are variable. For respiratory failure, the signs are possibly obstructed airway, slow breathing, no effort in respiratory, um, abnormal lung sounds, bradycardia, fails to respond, is cyanotic, and um, the appearance and capillary beds are variable. So with recognizing respiratory distress and failure, um, strider would be upper wear, signify an upper airway obstruction or a foreign body. Grunting would signify an upper wear obstruction or swollen airway or pneumonia, um, which is grunting to recruit the avioli. Um, for wheezing, you it would be a lower airway obstruction or possibly asthma. Um, crackles would be fluid in lungs that's wet. Um, and then absent or decreased breath sounds could be a collapsed lung for the air and blood or lung tissue disease such as pneumonia. Respiratory distress or failure generally falls into one of four broad categories. Upper airway, lower airway, lung tissue disease, and central nervous system issues. The list is not comprehensive and specific conditions should be addressed with specific therapy, but these represent the most common causes of respiratory distress or failure in a pediatric population. So the upper airway could be croup um, or swelling, foreign body, retropharyngeal abscess, or anaphylaxis. For the lower airway, it can be bronchiolitis or asthma. For lung tissue disease, it could be pneumonia, pneumonitis, and pulmonary edema. And for CNS issues, it could be an overdose or a head trauma. So when responding to respiratory distress or failure, for the airway, you should open and support the airway. You should suction and you should consider an advanced airway. Um, for breathing, you need to monitor the O2 stats um, if you need to provide supplemental oxygen and nebulizers. And then for circulation, you want to monitor vitals and establish vascular access. Um, PALS management of respiratory distress and failure is adjusted based on the severity of the current condition. For example, mild asthma is treated with bronchial dilator inhalers, but severe asthma um, may require ET intubation. So the provider must continually assess the person's current needs and adjust care accordingly. Some additional things to mention are that, as an example, croup management depends on the severity of the disease. Dexamethasone, a corticosteroid, can cause hypertension and reduce activation of lymphocytes. So with responding to respiratory distress and failure, um, for the upper airway, um, a cause could be croup and some treatment would be um, dexamethasone, um, oxygen, nebulizer, epinephrine, um, intubate, or a trachostotomy. Um, for a foreign body, um, you could treat with dexamethasone, oxygen, a nebulizer, intubate, or still the same with a trachostotomy. Um, and then anaphylaxis, um, epinephrine, 
um, a nebulizer or dye from one of the then, um, for lower airway, you could have bronchiolitis, um, so suctioning and nebulizers to treat this, or asthma. And for asthma, you could use oxygen, nebulizers, um, corticosteroids, magnesium sulfate, epinephrine, support breathing, and heliax. Um, for lung tissue disease, if it's pneumonia, dexamethasone, um, oxygen, nebulizers, intubate, and tra um, tracheostomy. For pneumonitis, it could be antibiotics, nebulizers, and support breathing. For pulmonary edema, you would treat with diuretics, um, inotrope, and support breathing. For CNS issues, such as an overdose, you could treat with naloxone um, and antidotes um, and support breathing. For trauma, you could treat with neurosurgery, reduce intracranial pressure, and support breathing. Um, So don't forget, we offer online PAL certification on our site. You can find a link in the description. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be um, on your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We will catch you in the next time.